watch your cows. They milk, and then all of a sudden, for three, four minutes, there's just a little enough milk coming in the cluster to keep the machine coming off. <coughs> That's not good for cows. The longer that machine is on that cow, the more opportunity you have for risk or a couple more come. for mastitis. Give you an example. I, like I say, I've known Moxies for a long, long time. 14 months ago, their average duration on their dairy was 5.2 or 5.5 minutes per cow. Now the cows are given three to four liters more, 3.7 to 3.8 minutes. Same people, same machine, but they're milking the cows what? Almost 30% faster. And you know why? Because they're spending more time prepping cows. They're spending more time and getting faster milking. It works everywhere in the world. I'm telling you, it will work here. The other thing I see here everywhere is your letdown. Every dairy that don't prep, what happens with machine on the clusters full of milk? 15 to 30 seconds later, there's absolutely no milk in that cluster. And then 30 to 45 minutes late, seconds later, cluster's full of milk again. Kills your cows. Absolutely kills your cows. But kind of the way it's always been, hasn't it? Just think if we could eliminate that 30 to 45 seconds on every cow in your dairy, what's that impact? It's huge. There's a difference between cisternal, yes. Andy, how long should we wait after we prep the cow before we put the milking machine on? Uh, I'll get to, give me a second, I'll get to that. There's a difference between cisternal letdown and mammary letdown. And that's what everybody has here is cisternal letdown. The milk that's in the cistern and teats comes out fast. And then we have to wait until the alveoli start collapsing. And then we see that 30 to 45 seconds later. Watch your cows. They'll tell you the truth. You know, here's a cow and here's a typical Australian cow. We put the machine on. We get flow, followed by no flow, followed by the true letdown. And we get a little bit of dribble phase here. And your cows aren't stupid here. Almost every dairy I've been at, where are the cows doing? Toward the end of milking. And then, if one of them's smart enough to kick the unit off, we're smarter than her, we put it back on. Have you ever watched your heifers here? Man, they don't like it towards the end of milking. So what happens? They learn to say, well, no one's smart enough to take the machine off, so I'm gonna dribble. And all of a sudden, a heifer that used to milk in two and a half minutes, milks in six minutes, and we're all happy. And I never say, well, Doc, you don't understand, when they milk two and a half minutes, they were given a lot more milk. And I said, let's see. Lots of milk, short time. Less milk, long time. Don't make it with me. So again, we gotta think about these things. Here's a cow, prepped her pretty well, milk went on, high flow, boom, it came down, and because of our ACR settings, or if we don't have a good prep, they'll drip. You know, here's a perfect cow. You know, look at, this is what we're trying to strive for. Instant letdown, milk, get the damn machine off. That's what we're looking for. Most people don't realize 80% of over milking on dairies occurs at the beginning of milking, not the end. Everything's over milking at the end of milking. <coughs> what do you think it means when a cow has no flow and have high vacuum at the beginning of milking? Same thing as what over milking is at the end of milking, high vacuum, no flow. 80% of over milking occurs at the beginning of milking, not the end of milking. Think about that. Milkability, the goal is to milk or attach the machine to a clean, dry, properly stimulated teeth. It's that simple. More and more dairies in Australia are implementing milking routines. Yesterday's meeting, dairy farmer told me now he preps and has lowered his cell count, increased milk production, increased time in the farm over 30 minutes. How many of you don't have something else you could do? 
If you save 30 minutes in the morning, 30 minutes in the afternoon, that hour, couldn't you do something else? I bet you can. Even if you have employees, couldn't they do something else? I bet they can. And what's what's in it for the cow? She had more time to eat, more time to lay down. I think that's a good thing. You think she wants to stand in that parlor as long as she can? Absolutely not. If you want to achieve your goals of a low bulk paint, uh, cell count, low clinicals, you must have a milking routine, period. When it's dry here, when you got enough pasture for the cows, you can get by with murder. But when do you guys have your mastitis? When it rains <coughs> or when it's hot? Why is it different then? Why is it that they have more troubles in? Because why did it work all the other times? So those are the questions you got to start asking yourself. You must have a milking routine, but sometimes, you know, consider doing it when you need it. You know, you don't have to do it all the time. But again, you might want to start it when things are, you're really having problems. Full prep versus no prep, no prep. Here's a dairy, double 36, they get 3.5 to 4 turns per hour in that parlor. Here's the exact same parlor with the exact same number of people. And now they have a full prep and they're getting five to 5.5 turns per hour. So when people say, I can't afford to do this, I look at them and say, how can you afford not to? Think about it. Same labor. And now all of a sudden we're milking 72 to 144 more cows. <coughs> And we have no added expense. How can you not look at that and say maybe it's time to change? Latest research, we used to say about 45 to 60 seconds from stimulation to attachment. All the new research is crystal clear. We need a minimum of 90 seconds. To let that time for the oxytocin to come out of the brain and go to the other and start squeezing cells. It's not instant. Everybody says, yeah, but doc, doc, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I look at my cows when they come to the parlor, they're, le they're leaking milk. And I says, just think about that. If that's really all the stimulation they need, they should be milked out by the time they get to the parlor. <laughs> right? Because they're saying, hey, I'm going to get milk. Man, I'm so happy I'm going to let my milk down. And all of a sudden, it's all going to be in the holding area. It's not true. The bottom line is what you're seeing is that's the cisternal let down. That's all you're seeing. If their cows were truly letting down their milk, why is it those clusters go empty? So again, it makes a difference. I had a dairyman we were at last Tuesday, I guess this Tuesday. Anyway, he said, I went home from your meeting on Monday night. He says, time was exactly the same. I said, what did you do differently? He said, well, I stripped all my cows. So I said, now you stripped all your cows, but you finished in exactly the same amount of time. <coughs> I said, so how's that possible? You had all that time, but you milked cows this fast. So I went to his, he had a computer thing, and I looked at the thing, he got, what, one and a half more liters of milk in that milking. He milked four more cows an hour. And then he started saying things like, you know, I never had to reattach a single unit. <laughs> 